Hi Forcer fans, I'm Peyton Tabor. I'm a junior year at the college and I do the weekly coaches show with Coach Kat where we sit down and talk about last week's game and the upcoming one. This week we talked about last week's game against Illinois College and the upcoming game against Ribbon. Here it is. First off, congrats on the win, Coach, and on being 5-0. and That's so exciting. Awesome, thanks. We're, it was a pretty exciting day to, to come back with that victory. Hard fought win on the road. Yeah. So first I want to start off as we recap the game. Um, I want to talk about the big plays that were made on special teams. You've been talking the past few weeks about how that area has kind of been up and down. Can you recap what happened in the punt return game? Because this is an area that you either want to score or set up the score, and you guys did both. You had two punt returns for a touchdown and two blocked punts. Yeah, it's not often that in one game you get 28 points basically generated from one special team. And, um, you know, we're very fortunate. We got two really talented players in particular, and Danny Baker, um, who has a unique knack for blocking punts. Um, and then A.J. Jackson, obviously, as a return man, is, is pretty special. Uh, but what goes unmentioned a lot of times is the other 10 guys that are on the field, or other nine guys that are on the field, and what they're doing. On A.J.'s second return, Danny's blocking a guy all the way to the sideline. And so even when he wasn't going for a block on the kick, he was available to make, he made himself available for the blocking and the, the punt return. You know, when you watch the um, first punt return that AJ has, which has, you know, a change of direction, there's an amount of discipline that each player is required to have to not block in the back as the ball starts to flow the other way. Because a lot of times if somebody makes that big, great cut, somebody blocks in the back, and then all of a sudden you're getting called back to the spot of the foul. Uh, but to have, a, you know, two offensive series set up by those blocked punts, where we had to go combine 30 yards for two touchdowns. That makes my play calling as an offensive coordinator a lot easier. Um, and I always tell the players, I joke, I'm, in, I'm also in charge of the return teams, so I don't feel guilty when those points go on the scoreboard for us for the offensive coordinator total. So it was a, uh, it was a great day. I mean, but both, th that team really excelled and set the tone for the rest of our you know, inner team dynamics. Our offense was really strong. Our defense was really strong. And um, I think there was a lot of inspiration early in the game from that first block punt that led to the easy touchdown and continuing on the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Now to kind of shift a little bit and talk about the defense, and you talked about Danny Baker a little bit, but he had his two block punts, and then he also had an interception. And your defense right now is only giving up about 12 points a game on average. Who else stood out to you this past weekend, and what stood out to you about the overall defense? Yeah, there were a couple of guys that really stood out. Um, Jamari Tansmore probably played one of his best games of his career, um, both from a production standpoint, but as a defensive tackle, as a nose guard, sometimes you do a lot of things that nobody else notices. And his ability to create pressure when he wasn't getting the quarterback, but also opening up lanes for other people. Um, uh, Dom Johnson was another one with two sacks. And then, um, you know, Javon Quinn had an interception with a really long return that we turned into uh, to points. Um, and he had another one on a fourth down play late in the game where he actually knocked the ball down, but should have been an interception. We won't hold that against him. but. He, he tells us it was a really smart play because he wouldn't have been able to return it, and it was, it was a better yard perspective. Um, but, you know, we had quite a few guys on defense having really good days, but those three guys um, in particular really stood out in terms of consistently getting after the quarterback, um, creating pressure and stopping up the run game. You know, Robbie McPhee's another one. He had a, a sack really early in the game that kind of said, okay, we're going to get – we're going to have pressure on the quarterback all day. We knew we had to keep their quarterback in the pocket that he's – way more dangerous when he's scrambling around than he is when he's in the pocket. And we wanted to make sure that um, we kept him there. So those guys did a great job. Yeah. Now to shift again to talk about the offense. You guys ran the ball really well. You had 242 yards on the ground. Is that the style of play that you were looking for in this game? Um, no. To be honest with you, you thought we were going to be a lot more quick passing game and stuff like that. And um, all of a sudden, we kind of got into a rhythm running the football. And we just stuck with it. And I thought you saw a number of different running backs taking carries. Um, you know, three different guys or four different people scoring rushing touchdowns. Um, Damon Bonds had a heck of a day. I mean, when you average 12 plus yards per carry, that's that's something you just got to keep feeding that person. Like, you, you don't need to pass the football when that's going on. And um, I don't want to say it was a conservative approach, but it was really definitely one that was the way the game was going with those two short fields with the blocked punts. And then, um, you know, kind of getting our rhythm we had a four play drive that was four handoffs running the exact same play so it was like okay that works let's let's keep doing that um but i don't want to complicate you know the old joe madden i don't want to complicate winning and um, i think that's what we tried to take the approach on sorry was you know we got some things that are working let's not let's got let's not get experimental just because and i've always said when i was a defensive coordinator the greatest mistake that certain offensive coordinators make is they turn the page in the playbook they they're having success doing something then they turn the page and then all of a sudden they're not having success why did they stop doing it 
And uh, so I'm kind of taking my own credence and advice now, just all right, if this is working, let's let's keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now let's let's talk about Ripon, who's also undefeated, and it's your second straight road game, and it's also a conference game. What challenges does Ripon pose for your guys? So offensively, they spread the ball all over the place, and they are um, they're in a unique transition. They used to be a triple option team, and now they're kind of that full calendar year of being it. Um, we played them in the spring last year when they were still figuring out a lot of things. They figured that stuff out, and uh, they've had a change of quarterback. And so now what they've done is taken probably the most explosive quarterback as a runner, um, and Cormac Madigan, he's now playing tailback and slot for them. So now we have to account for him. He was the Midwest Conference Offensive Player of the Week um, this past week. Um, had like seven touches for 200-something yards. Like it was a really impressive day. And so we've got to be aware of him. Um, they've got a couple of other wide receivers that I think are really talented as well, and it's just a matter of knowing where those guys are on the field. They like to stretch the field vertically, not just horizontally. Um, and so with Cormick at running back and then their other running back who was the conference player of the week the first week of the season, there's a lot of stuff over there that we got to pay attention to. And so, um, but they're really talented. They, they will stretch the field both ways and we've got to be prepared for that. Um, on defense, they run a, a, an odd front defense with a lot of blitzing and, you know, um, Coach Ernst has been there for probably 36 years or something like that. And um, it seems like every year he kind of reinvents himself just a little bit on defense. They, they have new coverage, they have new blitzes, they do different things, and um, definitely seeing some of that this year on film where they are you know, extremely aggressive, getting after people, and, and coming from a lot of different angles. And they'll present some of the same challenges uh, that maybe we saw against Cornell in the first half in that game where they'll overload sides for blitzes and things like that, and we just have to be ready to, to handle whatever comes our way. You touched on him a little bit, but speaking of their new quarterback, he only has one interception on the season, and their team as a whole is averaging about 35 points a game. What do you guys need to do on defense to contain their quarterback? Um, we just got to be aggressive. And it's the same thing. Our, our defensive line really determines how our secondary plays. We're not a big blitzing team. We don't send a lot of pressure. We, we count on those front three, front four guys, depending on the front, to really get after the quarterback and, and create uncomfortability for them. And so long as those guys are doing that, our secondary will handle the rest. I think that that's the one thing they've done a great job of at Ripon this year is their pass protection has been really above board. And I, I think that was something that last year in the spring as they were making that transition from being a triple option team to being a spread team, I think that was something a lot of their offensive linemen were really learning as they were going in the spring. And those games that they had really prepared them well for this fall. And I, I think that's going to really ask a lot of our guys to do really well against them. What are, what are the keys to victory for us as we go into the game? Yeah, we've got to run the football again, um, just like we did on Saturday. It would be great. Um, that would make my job really easy as a play caller. Uh, but there's a couple of things. We've got to get A.J. more involved on offense. You know, we, he only had three touches on Saturday as an offense player, and um, that's probably the lowest amount for his career, to be honest with you. And it wasn't intentional, but we also lost three drives in the second half when we were returning punts for touchdowns. So we, uh, we need to find a way to get him some more touches on offense early. Um, Two other guys that really we didn't get as involved as much on Saturday were Cooper Tomlin and, and Jared Henderson. And those are guys that you know each week you see with three or four catches or attempts or targets at least. And um, it just, the way the game went, we were handing the ball off a lot. And so we need to have a little bit more diversity in that in the opening parts of the games. Um, and then defensively, we just gotta get after people. We, we gotta stay aggressive. And if we play like we did on Saturday this week on defense, I think we're gonna be just fine. Well, that's actually all I had for you today, Coach. So that kind of wraps up our show. Best of luck against Griffin, and I look forward to talking with you next week after another Forster victory. Thank you. I look forward to it. Go Forsters.